Hey YouTubers, uh, this is partly a response to To Be Serious. Uh, I might go off a little bit of a tangent, but I have promised to make a few response videos before, so um, this caught my interest. Um, not only because of the transhumanism, um, immortality, uh, and everything, but I, I've recently got a book from a charity shop. I do a lot of shopping at charity shops, but you can find some good deals, you can find some good finds, and I found this. Uh, is There Life After Death by Anthony Peake. What drew my attention was the foreword by Grayson, who is a, uh, he's a psychologist who studies near-death experiences and uh, paranormal, that sort of malarkey. Um, but this book is also um, one of these quantum mysticism books, and um, in that way it was, was quite, quite uh, coincidental that I happened to stumble across it. Um, but this this particular book offers one uh, eternal life through um, crazy solipsism, quantum physics. Um, it says that we're the master of our own universes, and we can't uh, not exist in those universes. Um, but what it fails to understand is that there is no consistent I. Um, you know the the immortality, true immortality, can't technically exist because there is no uh, consistent I that can always exist forever. Um, our neurons are in constant flux, every atom in our body is constantly being arranged, our cells are dying and being replaced, our psychological states are forever adapting and changing, so th there is no I uh, <laughs> that exists anyway. So. Um, I think any anything that justifies immortality in the true transcendental se uh, sense um, is is really can't be justified entirely. Um, this is one of my criticisms about uh, quantum theories of mind. I think that rather than uh, explaining what the ego is, what parts constitute it, etc., it plays up to the ego itself, uh, offers you eternal life, transcendental free will. Um, the the um, you know, ethical values being fundamental in some platonic realm um, beyond the, the physical and um, it's rather grandiose in that respect but I nonetheless um, have my own sort of interpretation of what immortality is um, again you talked about um, I, I watched a few of the other videos um, talked about um, uploading yourself into a machine um, existing forever, etc. Uh, this is something that um, obviously my teleportation video was a, a little bit similar to. Um, you know, um, if you could recreate the, the exact same neural pathways, etc. and take the information, transport them in a different set of atoms or even a different medium entirely, like a computer or a software program, then you could carry on this existence um, because the only thing we've got to go off is our memories that say we've existed before when in fact that's not entirely true because as I said before we're in constant flux but my version of immor uh, immortality is slightly different from this um, I want to uh, first of all um, just refer to Hawking's four-dimensional universe. Now it was Einstein, um, someone probably said it before him, I'm not entirely sure, but he said um, space and time, um, time is just another dimension. And in Hawking's Brief History of Time, again, I forgot specifically, someone might have said it before, but um, space and time are curved in on each other. So it's like a four-dimensional sphere which cannot truly be said to have any beginning or ending, it just exists, that's existence. Yes, we can walk across it, but there, there's no beginning or ending, just like our planet Earth doesn't have a beginning or ending. Um, so that's really how I see it, but an, an analogy that I like to draw upon is, say, existence, space and time, the, the entire universe, uh, like a book, this book, just to be appropriate, um, now, with our, the way that the human mind um, works, it's beneficial to impose some sort of order. So, when we read a book, we'll read it from start.
start to finish, we'll read it quite linearly. Um, and that's how we'll make sense of the book. But in truth, the book has no order other than the order that we might impose. It just is. And the same is the nature of um, space and time. It just is. And this is the order that, um, as humans, we impose to make so some sort of sense of it. So this, um, this means that every moment, every choice that you make exists and it exists for all time. It's eternally true. Um, if one can speak about eternity when um, time is a human imposed notion, I don't know, but I hope you're, you're following what I mean. Um, so in, in some ways, um, this is where I find Nietzsche's um, eternal recurrence. Um, I share similarities with that. Although again, this book kind of uh, bastardizes eternal recurrence and I think takes it perhaps more literally than Nietzsche meant it to be. But um, the way that I see it is because existence exists and time is, it just is. It's, um, it's eternal uh, and because of that very idea, then the choices that we make are profoundly important. Um, and uh, this is this is where my immortality comes from. <laughs> I am immortal. No, uh, because uh, space and time, etc., are merely illusions, and, and really they're, they're part of the same thing, which is existence. Then. We always exist, therefore, and this is where our immortality comes from. Although, yes, I agree that you could upload and um, whatever yourself to a machine. I really think, again, as has been discussed before by yourself and a few other people, that the ethical considerations um, are not to be taken too lightly. Um, and I think we've got to really discuss this long and hard. And we have to keep a strong eye on what's going down in that um, particular region because it will only be a matter of time before this perhaps becomes um, becomes a possibility. And obviously, who are the people that are going to exploit this? The rich and the well-off um, rather than the, the poor. And there are many other ways that they could exploit such a system. So... Um, I hope I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, yeah take care peace